You said there's opportunities there for the guys that you're recruiting see those opportunities. At Oklahoma, you're used to recruiting from the top of the standings. Can you maybe describe the change and or if there is a change? Top of the standings, what does that mean? I'm sorry. Going for playoff or oh, I got you. The Big 12 being the team that's recruiting yeah. the guys that you want versus recruits maybe looking at your 5-5 five and five record going, what are those? Yeah. I don't know. One of our best recruiting classes was um, in 1999. We had two weeks to recruit. Uh, it'd be, that'd be a good story, good story idea. Uh, go back and look at that group of guys, uh, whether it's Derek Strait or Brandon Everidge or Josh Heupel or Torrance Marshall. You know, some really good players, and there's uh, a lot more than just that. But uh, Quentin Griffin, you know, didn't even start on his own high school team. But when you start watching tape late, a lot of times. Those guys that develop later, you know, can become just amazing players. A like Jeremy Beal, you know, that we, you recruit for a very short amount of time. I know I've said this before, but I think identifying good football players and guys that love it, guys that are high character, guys that value education, guys that have a blue collar work ethic, uh, looking for guys that um, have instincts. They may not have all the measurables. Uh, when some of the guys show up to a combine, uh, you know, one of those camps that, oh, man, he ran 4-7. Well, you know what? 4-7 is pretty good. Rocky Countless is 4-7. You know Rocky Countless? Mm-hmm. Yeah, heard of him. So, uh, you know, you know, there's a thing called game speed, too. And, again, listen, we're, we're trying to find the biggest, baddest, strongest, most explosive, ferocious players you can. Sometimes they're highly re- regarded and sometimes they aren't. I think, and that's, and I've challenged the staff you know, three months ago, don't go off a list or who's offered people. You know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of effort being spent now with uh, whether it's handlers or um, outside resources that are promoting kids. Um, some of it's warranted and some of it's uh, not. It's hype, and you know, let their play on the tape. You know, and all their their character references. You know, be you know, uh, what we use and continue to watch guys and see if they can develop. So, um, you know, from opportunity as far as guys that maybe we have committed or we're still recruiting, absolutely, I think that's attractive. There's, where's their track record, you know, that, uh, again, okay, we're, not, we're having uh, we're five and five, so it's been how many ever years? It's been a long time since Oklahoma's been five and five. I've never been five and five. But, you know, it's also, I think, you have to be real and practical. And, you know, I think this this is the biggest roster turnover that's ever happened here, right? I think that's fair to say. So that's never happened until now, too. So I think a lot goes into it. Uh, I think there's, you know, you can sell, again, uh, you know, you're looking for anything, right? You're in, you're in a sales business. I think you'd be uh, negligent if you didn't. So, hey, we're, you know, Three of the losses, one score losses. It comes down to the last, you know, drive of the game. We got to be a little better. We got a lot of things got to be better. But uh, and then when there's there's a track record of success. Um, uh, certainly, uh, schemes on both sides of the ball and coaches and experience in, in big games and uh, successful teams and things of that nature. I think goes a long way. And you have a long history, not a not a you know a winning season here and a winning season there. I'm talking about a long history of success. And, and then they're in the recruiting game on their side of it. They're they're trying to know people, and what's real and what isn't as well. And so when you come from a place of genuineness and authenticity, I think people see that. You know, when you're uh, being real and you're being honest, and uh, you know, and it's a, a relationship driven. So uh, you know, I think that I think it's uh, you know start with again like uh, say we had a, a top notch quarterback committed like and go anywhere in the country, and schools are still coming after him really hard. Excellent schools that are in those big games that you're talking about or having those successful seasons. But somehow, some way, he continues to stay loyal to you because he sees a vision. He sees track record. He has uh, you know, dreams to uh, have this amazing opportunity at you know, your school. And, and he's developed these relationships that mean something to him. And you know, so I think I think some of those things through all the the noise and uh, what can be you know the negativity. And listen, if I'm on the other side of it, man, I'm <laughs> I'm using all that too. Uh, if I'm recruiting against, you know, that's what I'd be saying. I say, are you sure? So uh, you know, it just comes with it. You know, you don't like it, and do something else. 
Uh, I'm just saying as a recruiter, I'm talking about myself. Uh, but I don't mind it, you know. I expect it, and my job is to um, protect it and have a voice of reason. And, uh, and if at some point somebody wants to, you know, uh, move on, that's okay too. You know, there's plenty of guys. There's a whole long line of people, you know, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. They'd love to, for an opportunity to come here. And our job is is to always be ready in in that regard. And sometimes, all right, you lost this one. And I've had, this has happened many times through the years. You lost this great one, the one that you couldn't ever lose. You don't lose him. He's that one. And then you get something else, and uh, because of it, you replace him with someone else, and this other one comes in, and it's amazing. Like, and that's happened time and time and time again. So uh, just having, a, you know, using your experience, too, to, to, again, be a voice of reason, you know, uh, for both your staff and for recruits. Um, no. I mean, again, you know, I think our, our roster would probably need a, a couple of spots. You know, we'll just see how everything goes. But uh, <clears throat> I just would say, if you just look back at it, um, uh, we don't need a quarterback, okay? Uh, I, that's how I feel. Uh, and so, because you see some elite quarterbacks in the, in the trainer, uh, transfer portal for whatever reason. Um, and then... Uh, Maybe because a, a staff is let go, you, you might be some excellent players that also are great guys and workers. Uh, you know, are they running from something? That's what you got to ask yourself. And um, and I wouldn't put them all in that at all. Uh, Virginia lost the center last year. Bronco Mendenhall retired. They lost the center. You know, we tried to get him. Uh, I don't know. He's he'll he'll be one of the favorites to win the Remington and. All-American, he's killing it at Michigan. And so, you know, finding them is one thing and then doing everything you can to, to, to attract them is another. There's another one, that, uh, defensive lineman. Man, we, we were within seconds of going to the portal. We are on the phone and lots of conversation. We couldn't get him to come. And uh, he already had it in his mind where he was going and didn't take any other visits and, and he's having a great year. Uh, so it's hard. As I told the coaches, don't – that's not going to be – uh, the only answer. I mean, you're not going to get bailed out, okay? Uh, because I'm not going to, you know, there's one guy he's kicked off the team, and I got a couple coaches coming to me like, hey, man, this is the one. He's the one. Like, he, that coach kicked him off their team. And again, there's, hey, some things, things happen. But this coach don't kick nobody off the team unless they've done something. I'm like, and that's supposed to be our answer, you know? And, and guess what? He, Hadn't played for the other team yet. And so you spend all this time and these resources and you put them in your locker room. And I I tell these parents, I'm, I'm going to work really hard to surround your son with great people. You know, people matter. And, uh, you know, people always make the place. And, and so finding the right kind of people, they're about all the right stuff. They're good enough, bare minimum. That starts with that. And then making sure that, again, they're – you know, they're about the right stuff and the values align. You know, again, they, they again, value education, value structure and accountability and the discipline and, and uh, you know, want to be told the truth and want to have to work for their opportunity. They're not entitled to anything. And so all those things matter in the transfer portal, and you got a very small window to try to figure that out, even smaller now, uh, before the guys could be in the transfer portal, you know, months ago, which, you know, I, I'm not a – you know, I don't, I don't love that either, you know, because I just don't like guys having the ability to, you know, just quit in the middle of the season. I don't I don't think that's healthy, I mean, just as a dad. You know, no, you finish, and then if you – when the season's over and you need a fresh start, then let's, let's look at it then. But, you know, you're committed to something. You need to follow through, you know. I don't think that's asking too much. So I think some of those guidelines now, if they've done that to protect – you know, the schools too, uh, and really the kids from themselves at the end of the day. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.